creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. I'm so glad you joined me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to work with DecoArt Chalky Paint. We'll talk to an artist who has used her talents to help others going through various illnesses. And finally, we'll learn how to cook with kale. One of my guests is Elena Echeverry, and she's the founder and executive director with Charity Wings in San Marcos, California. Elena will show some upcycling and distressing techniques featuring DecoArt chalky finish paints. They go on with just one coat and require no sanding or use of primers. Another guest is an artist, designer, and model, and she's on a mission. Although facing terminal cancer herself, Monica Duran has found a way of helping other women through her creative artwork. She'll discuss how pain is reflected in each of her paintings and even tell how illness has influenced her modeling career. Her company is Monista Arts and Designs and she lives in Española, New Mexico. What's for lunch, you ask? The answer is kale, but do you know what kale is? Carol Finster is an author and registered dietitian and she will explain what kale is, show some different varieties and explain why it's so good for us. She'll also show how to make kale chips, which are such a popular healthy snack food right now. Carol's company is Savory Palette, and she's from Centennial, Colorado. Carol, thank you so much for coming. And, and uh, when I heard that we were going to talk about kale, I thought, have I ever eaten kale? <laughs> if I have, I probably didn't know it. So uh, I think we're going to present some information that may be a little bit new to other people. It may be. You know, kale, there was a time when you maybe found kale at a health food store at the farmer's market, oh. uh -huh. and that's the only place. Now it's at all the grocery stores. It's literally the darling of the nutrition world. <laughs> and not only do you find just one kind, you find many different kinds. Oh, really? In many different shapes, you know, it's actually a member of the cru cruciferous family. It's a cabbage, oh, but it doesn't cabbage. look like cabbage, does it? No. So the ways we can buy it are as what one of my favorites. This is called Tuscan kale or um, dinosaur kale. Dinosaur. Po possibly because of the leaf and kind of the dinosaur. Lumpy. Lumpy, uh, dark uh -huh. look. Uh -huh. Who knows? It's interesting. Mm -hmm. This is called curly kale, and these will both be in the produce section. Now see, I think when I said I don't know if I've eaten it, I, I think I may have bought it thinking it was leafy lettuce. Right, it looks like uh -huh. grief, le leafy green lettuce, uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> and um, other ways of buying it though is you can buy it as a um, already oh. cut up as like mm -hmm. a salad mm -hmm. and ready just to toss like you would toss lettuce greens. Mm -hmm. You can also buy it frozen, which is a nice way to do it if you wanna just keep it in the freezer if you're not gonna eat it you know, a lot at one it. time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can also buy kale chips, which we we're gonna talk about today. And I've never heard of those. Isn't that, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's a whole new concept. And of course you can make smoothies, green smoothies. And uh, I, I uh, like to say that I get my husband to eat kale in his smoothies by mixing in a, a berry that's blueberry or red that makes <laughs> the smoothie red and he doesn't know. Sort of know. disguises yeah, it. Yeah, it's uh -huh. called stealth nutrition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know you are an expert, truly. Um, in gluten-free cooking. So how does kale fit into the diet? It is totally gluten-free and oh, therefore is. safe for everybody. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't put any gluten-containing ingredients on it, um, you're good to go. Well, it's, okay. It's, and it's extraordinarily healthy. It has all um, tons of vitamins A and C and K. It's um, high in calcium and it's got, of course, fiber. So what I want to show you mm -hmm. today is how to make these kale chips. Oh, we it can make those so at home. Mm -hmm. simple. You can make them at home. So I have some started. This is the bowl that we've, we've torn the pieces or cut them into bite-sized pieces. Now we're using the dinosaur. We are using the dinosaur. And so I, I thought I'd show you the two ways. You don't uh -huh. want to use this vein because no. it's, it won't dry very well. Uh -huh. So there's two ways of, of preparing it. One is you can tear it like mm -hmm. this. Which is pretty fast. Which is pretty uh -huh. fast, sure. And, um, or you can take and use a paring knife and cut on either side of the oh. vein, uh -huh. just like this. And, and then just cut the pieces if that's and what you And you just you're... discard, there's no reason to keep the vein. There's no, nothing to there's do with no it. reason, although, you know, some people might say that you might use them in soups. Soups, oh, okay. Uh, but I think the, the vein is gonna be pretty tough and pretty woody, so oh. it's probably not going to be something. Uh -huh. I would, you could probably compost them, I, I don't know for sure. So what you do is you put them in the bowl, mm -hmm. 
and what we're going to do is toss them. Now, if there was any moisture on these, and I patted them dry beforehand, but you would want oh. to either put them in a salad mm -hmm. spinner or before you started cutting, pat the leaf with a paper towel, because here's why. We're gonna sprinkle olive oil on here and try to mix it all together so that every part of the, the bite is coated so that it will dry in the oven. Mm -hmm. um, so you, want, you just wanna make sure, and there's no moisture here, these are pretty dry. So we toss it with olive oil, and if you were doing this at home, you would make, try to make sure that the olive oil was totally covering each and every piece. Mm -hmm. It's a little harder with this curly stuff because it's, it's hard so to get it hard to get in, in it. So mm -hmm. what some people do is get in there with their hands and literally massage the oil in, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then what you do, and we're using a small um, baking sheet today just because to save space, but you get the idea. You can, uh -huh. you know, I usually make a big 18 by 13 or 9 by 13. So if and, you make the large and after, you, after it's ready, which is what we'll show in just a minute, can you freeze that? I don't or think these would, you... would freeze very well because I think they would re no longer retain the crisp nature. You're trying to make oh, a chip. Chips, I Not see. Not that they're going to replace a potato chip or corn chip because they're mm -hmm. a different texture, but the notion of something crunchy in your... Uh -huh. In your mouth, but you will could be lost. put it in soups or stews. Oh, sure, or, uh -huh. you, and you could or freeze it for that purpose, and then good. just be just toss them in your yeah. soup. Okay. I think kale goes great with beans, personally, mm -hmm. like white bean soup. I, uh -huh. I get that a lot in restaurants. So spread them out as best you can, mm -hmm. and then maybe sprinkle with a little bit of salt. And here's where you know the sky's the limit. Do whatever you want. Parmesan is good. Oh, if you mm -hmm. go in the store and you buy these, you're going to find them. First of all, they're going to cost you about five or six dollars for a bag, a bag like this, wow. yeah, where you can make them for next to nothing at home, especially if you grow your own, which I'm thinking mm -hmm. about doing this year. And um, I think it's a pretty hardy thing to grow. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty easy. So put these in the oven, um, or if you have a dehydrator, oh, but that would be good. anymore, mm -hmm. our modern day ovens usually have a, a convection setting. Mm -hmm. I put mine in at 180 on the convection setting, and that makes the, the air whirl around and it dries them out. Maybe 10 to 15 minutes is pretty quick because oh, so they're not watch very. Watch it. Uh -huh. Watch it. Yeah, this yeah. is not a time to be leaving the kitchen, um, leaving them alone. Uh -huh. Then take them out and let them cool, and what you end up with mm -hmm. is kale chips. And if there's any mm, left, really you crisp. can freeze them. They're very crisp, uh -huh. and they'll come out all different sizes, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how you cut your, your mm -hmm. leaf. But they are delicious and, ex like we said, extraordinarily nutritious. And you, the beauty is you've controlled what goes into them. Well, and I was just wondering, could you add some of these to um, maybe sour cream or make your own dip? Of course. Would that be good? That would be a great, oh, a kale is. dip. Uh -huh. You'd already have the se whatever seasonings you put on it, maybe uh, Parmesan yeah. or, you know, I've seen them with nacho cheese flavorings, uh -huh. um, cayenne pepper, green oh. chili. Mm -hmm. If you look in the stores today, um, the variety of flavors that they are putting on kale chips is really amazing. Well, that's it. We can go and look and yeah. then look at the price tag and then go home <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and know that we and can make, make our own. own. And it's that's not a wonderful. huge time investment either. Well, it's so nice to know that kale is really good for everyone and we can start recognizing the different varieties right. in the produce department. Thank you very much for coming today, Carol. Thank you. Monica, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I've seen pictures of you and your daughter and pictures of uh, both of your designs and um, artwork, but uh, you have probably the most interesting story to tell as to why you do what you do. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's you, as I understand it, have a terminal cancer and you're very open and out front with it because everything you do, you hope inspires someone else. Yes. Why did you decide to, to take this angle with your artwork? Well, my artwork, um, Cheryl, was actually birthed through cancer. I um, was not an artist prior to um, me being having cancer. Uh -huh. um, I started working on images um, in the evenings and hiding it from my family on how I felt, how my emotions were that one day. Mm -hmm. And I started creating images, and um, that's how my artwork was birthed. 
were these images of how you were feeling at that particular moment or what yes. you had? Okay, so it was all about how you were feeling and maybe dealing with your disease? Uh huh, yes, different, dealing with how I was feeling or dealing with how I wished I could be. Oh, mm hmm. You know? Did you ever feel bitter though that uh, maybe dreams you had were not going to be fulfilled? Um, yeah, I had just graduated with an architect degree and an interior design degree, uh -huh. and a month later I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh -huh. So a little bitter. Both. Uh -huh. And my son uh -huh. was born a month after that as well. Uh -huh. So um, yes. You were dealing with a lot of different emotions then at the same time. Yes, uh -huh. I was. So and I understand this is. I guess we could say a signature piece. Yes. I think we all recognize the pink ribbon for mm -hmm. breast cancer, but um, when did you do that? What does that mean to you? This was one of my first pieces. Um, it just signifies to me um, different things. Of course, the cancer ribbon, breast mm -hmm. cancer. Um, and the, it's called Raining Tears. Uh -huh. Yeah, I Raining think that's Tears. It also reflects not only pain, but it reflects um, being well, mm -hmm. too. Raining tears could be, to me, both um, things, happy tears uh -huh. or sad tears. And happy tears, to me, that I wanted to put and reflect in, into this was that women do come out of this. Mm -hmm. when they do come out in remission, and they do fight. And um, it's a hard disease. I am blessed that I went into remission with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so it means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, my story means a lot to me. And you said when you do shows and, and conventions or um, art uh, gallery types of things, this, this piece really does get a lot of attention. Yes. Yes, a lot of attention. Uh -huh. um, I've had several buyers, but for some reason I, I don't sell it. Uh -huh. um, I think if anywhere I would like to put it would be in an area where there would be breast cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's certainly and true. Donate it. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Well, you have this one that's called China Red, and I had to tell you because I didn't see what it was portraying. Would you tell us about it? Well, that was, I was feeling wonderful on that day. Red is bright and beautiful. It also signifies um, my faith. Behind it, there's a silhouette of a cross uh -huh. and um, feeling the cross that I've had to carry for as many years as I've been sick. Um, and on that day, it was just a very beautiful day to me. And that's what took place. What, do you work in oil, or do you work in lots of different mediums? Different mediums, uh -huh. yeah. It'll never be the same. Do, does one, when you're happy, do you prefer one medium over another, or when you're feeling down and depressed, do you work with a different one? No. No, so mm -mm. it just, it doesn't really matter. Mm -mm. Whatever you feel like. Whatever uh -huh. I feel like, what I put together is, it could be all paint, all drawing, all mixed, mm -hmm. but... I like to use mixed a lot. Uh huh. Mixed yeah. media. Mm -hmm. And then the third one we want to talk about, uh, I think everyone recognizes Marilyn Monroe, but why did you choose to paint this and what does the, the division of the pictures mean? Um, I feel like Marilyn Monroe, um, we have a lot in common. Marilyn Monroe went into the industry very young and naive. Of course, everybody remembers her for ODing mm -hmm. on drugs. I look at it like um, the beauty of what she had, but then yet turned into something else. And so I think that the, well, that's the brokenness is what signifies that, mm -hmm. is, is the beauty within mm -hmm. and the beauty that took her out. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so I, I relate to her a lot in some ways. So that's, that's why you did that one. Mm -hmm. you, you also are a runway model. You've modeled in lots of fashion shows. Yes. Do, do you enjoy that part of it? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I understand you're hoping to get into acting. 
Yes. Boy, yes. nothing slows you down, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you being here. It's such a pleasure to meet you and thank good you. luck with your careers. And thank you for inspiring so many other women. Thank you so much for having me. Elena, it's so nice to have you here today, and I appreciate you coming. I know we're going to, you're going to demonstrate a product, a project for us in just a minute using some wonderful products, but I first wanted to find out how this project and scrapbooking and bottle cutting, all of these things that you do in your, uh, in your charity, how it's a part of helping other people. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. So Charity Wings, we're a nonprofit organization and our mission is to inspire people of all ages to gather, give back and create. So we have built this 6,000 square foot art and craft center mm -hmm. in San Diego. It's filled to the gills with art supplies and we bring in all sorts of nonprofit groups. So cancer support groups, wounded warriors, um, people with developmental disabilities, and we give them the gift of art. Mm -hmm. And we're supported by manufacturers. So basically- So you provide everything for exactly. them. Exactly, they come in and it's free to them. But you know, art is such a healing tool. Mm -hmm. I know you know you scrapbook and things uh -huh. like that. And when you're sitting there scrapbooking, you're smiling the whole time. That's true. And when you get done, with a project, how good do you feel? That's right. So when we bring these groups in, sometimes we do holiday cards or we you know, do other projects, but they leave with a completed mm -hmm. project that they get to take home and know that they made with their own two hands. And you can also be proud because some of the people who have come in and showed how to do things have gone on and made a business out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely, so then they That's can amazing. possibly take that and you know, with the bottle cutting or with upcycling, and we love upcycling, uh -huh. which is what we're gonna talk about today, but it's a great way to start your own home business. That's true. Yeah. Well, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many frames I have, some in worse shape, but um, we just all have frames around the we house do. or in a barn or a garage. Yeah. Why do we have so many friends? I don't I'm not know. really sure, but we do. <laughs> we so do. what we want to show you today is how you can upcycle them, um, make them fit with your maybe new decor, uh -huh. or just make them, give them a new life. And you said we're going to do sort of a vintage look. I love that look. Yeah. It's uh, very popular right now. It is very popular. Uh -huh. The uh, shabby chic, chic. Mm -hmm. you know, where you take a sandpaper or something, some rope, and just beat the crap. Oh, whoops. Um, yeah, so, and uh, the um, boho chic look, that kind of farmhouse look or country kitchen, all of those work mm -hmm. really well with this line. So we can do it with metal, we can do it with wood. Um, it goes, any, so anything? this chalky finish paint by oh. Deco Art, it goes on any surface. Chalky finish. Chalky finish, so it's an ultra matte finish. Mm -hmm. So you can put it on glass, you can put it on metal, you can put it on plastic, any non-porous huh. surface, any slick surface will take it. So once we find our frame, exactly. do, how do we prepare it so we can do this? Okay, you actually don't need to do anything to prepare oh, it. I already like yeah, this Yeah, I product. know, it's very cool. Now if you had like a table or something that you were gonna do and maybe there's a stain on it, uh -huh. there is a stain blocker in the line that you could put on and let it dry and that will present, prevent the stain from coming through because there oh. are some stubborn mm -hmm. stains, mm -hmm. right? But otherwise, you don't need to sand, you don't need to do anything. You, remember we were talking about mm -hmm. those cobwebs, right? Oh when yeah, you pull just it out, dust them off. Dust huh? them off and they're ready to go. So, so yeah. it doesn't really matter what shape Nope. the original frames in. No, okay. it can look like anything. This was just a really old frame from India, I think, and we just uh -huh. covered it with the red. Uh -huh. I haven't even done anything to treat that at all yet. It oh, just looks okay. great, just like this. All right, and, and obviously this product comes in lots of beautiful colors. There are 29 vintage intermixable colors in this line. Uh -huh. So it's great because they all go together. Okay, how do we yeah. get started? Okay, so basically I've prepped two frames. This is just a sample of some kind of frame you could mm -hmm. use. But I prepped two frames here for us and I figured you could help me with this a little oh, bit. Good. So um, this is the cream wax. So I've already painted and let this completely dry and I used the vintage. And you just use the, the sponge brushes or a you regular paint You can use any kind brush? of paint brush. They have the little angle brush that's nice because oh. it gets into all the cracks I and like crevices. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you can use any kind of paint brush. I mm -hmm. you know, sometimes pull them out of my hair or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, or use it to put back uh -huh. in my hair. So um, 
Yeah, so basically you're going to use mm. a brush with this. Now because these are really creamy, mm -hmm. you can use any kind of brush. Oh. Um, a lot of times when you're using waxes, people want to use a waxing brush, which is basically okay. a stipple brush. Mm -hmm. But that's to get in the cracks. Oh. Because these are so nice and creamy, you mm -hmm. can actually use a regular paintbrush too. Oh. Let okay. me just pull a paper towel here for you. And now this is clear, so it's not going to add color at all. It's not going to add any color. What it's going to do is it's going to um, provide a finish. And once it's dry, it'll dry completely matte as well. But see how it's just yeah, getting it's in all those shiny, cracks? Which is nice, though, because it lets me see where I might have missed. Exactly. Uh -huh. And once this dries, you can actually use a rag and buff it, and it'll turn shiny. So oh. you can have some different options here. What's great Either about these waxes, shiny. you can uh -huh. go what, matte or shiny. And then once you've sealed your piece, uh -huh. it's really great because then you can go over with the colored wax. So every piece needs to be sealed. It doesn't have to be, oh. but if you want that look. Oh, okay. It's just another option for you. Uh-huh. Yeah, so oh, the okay. wax is a seal. So um, I would go ahead and do this whole frame. You could do uh -huh. that whole frame. Is this water soluble? It is, is water based, it so it's water easy cleanup, exactly. Oh, okay. And we love that. Oh yeah, I do yeah. too. Um, and then it is more durable and easier to distress than other acrylic paints. Uh -huh. And one of the fun things also is once you get that dry, and I'm just going to show you here, this okay. one's already ready to go, and you can use the brown cream wax. Oh, and these this are all is how, waxes. Exactly. Uh -huh. And then if you put a little bit of that mm -hmm. right on the edge here. Oh, and the angle brush works good mm -hmm. with that The angle again. brush works well with because that. it goes. So see now, how am you're I putting kinda, too nope, much? No, you're not. You can't really put too much because what you're going to do next is you're going to use a clean rag. And remember, this is kind of a little tip, when you are wiping wax off of your frame, you don't want to use a dark colored rag because sometimes the oh. color can transfer, transfer. Oh, onto your frame. About so that. use a light rag and then we can just gently But see, it stays off. down in those grooves. Exactly, That's it's wonderful. in the grooves. Uh -huh. And the other thing is, if you still have too much, right, like you right can there. use the wax and um, use the clear wax on it again and it will pick up the color for you. Oh, it will. Yeah. Uh huh. So if you've if you've not liked the way it turned out, mm -hmm. but I love that. Oh, I do too. Now, do you put a top coat or anything to you seal it? You don't need to. It's you don't. all ready to go. <laughs> and like I said, it's durable, so it's really uh -huh. nice. You can use this for kitchen, uh, anything in your kitchen, like your kitchen mm -hmm. counter or whatever. Um, so this is their new line, and you can find it in your craft stores and your hardware mm -hmm. stores. And it's so great for giving your furniture a new life. Really, I just really updating love it. it. Now this frame, this so. Sort of the distressed look, yeah. right? Yes, this is the distressed look. And underneath this one is actually gold on the outside. You know, do you remember those oh. frames that were kind of gold oh, on yeah. the outside and one on the inside? Too. So there's so many different ways to distress your frame. One, obviously, is to use the waxes uh -huh. and kind of give it that dug out of the barn look. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's soft to me, it it's homey looking. It is, <laughs> it is. I, I love it. It's, it's just vintage. Um, and then you can also use sandpaper. So mm -hmm. you can get different sanding. Um, things going on mm -hmm. and one thing you want to remember when you're distressing things is not to forget to distress your corners Oh, because that's I, where normally it would start first exactly, wouldn't it? Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. So when you're distressing make sure you get your corners really good. This one I just kind of did mm -hmm. a little bit of light sanding but this piece, the red one uh -huh. you were looking at, I actually I used a this. water distressing technique. If you wait at least 30 minutes but no more than an hour you can wipe this paint off so oh. if it's, even if it's a little bit dry, you can now take the it. the paint, we're not talking about the wax. Not the wax, I'm okay. sorry. So the this paint. one's not been treated yet. Uh -huh. But you can put and the paint on, on, and 30 minutes later, you can take a wet rag and uh -huh. just wipe some of it off. So it's a I resist technique. Uh -huh. And then after an hour, you're kind of done. <laughs> and was this black to it start with? It was a dark, dark brown. Oh, okay. Dark, so dark if we brown. wanted to, we could paint it a dark color. Exactly. And then put a red or exactly. green. Oh, exactly. I think this is such a so pretty So the intermixable look. colors, that's kind of the idea. Uh -huh. is you could layer the colors together and then mm -hmm. get down to the other color. And, and this, this was a one. tray. It was a really cool vintage tray. Oh, that's um, why the handles are on yes, it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So I popped the middles out to bring them here for uh -huh. the show. But yeah, that's a really fun one. And uh -huh. you can distress with a lot of different things. Like uh -huh. we were talking about the petroleum jelly. There's a petroleum I've never jelly. I've done that. Yeah, there, and there's lots of tutorials on Deco Art's website. Uh -huh. So um, you can go on there and see lots of different techniques and things you can do. But and this see is which one fun. you like. But what an easy it's project. Fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so it is fun. Well, we'll take out you. your frames. Well, thank you so much for showing us what to do with all those frames we have <laughs> on you. hand. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make Zen doodles and discuss a new food trend called food truck cookery.
One of my next guests is an artist and designer, and she's going to explain what a Zentangle is, tell how it got started, and show what supplies are needed. She'll also talk about all the different surfaces you can use to create this art form. Another guest is a cookbook author, chef, and teacher, and he's going to talk about the latest craze in fast food. It's called food truck cookery. He'll even demonstrate some of the food items that are the most popular to make and sell. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a special booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. We are celebrating our 40th year on PBS. This booklet is titled the 40th Anniversary Series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this commemorative booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter too. Go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. We would also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you.